Let's build it, baby. RC Kicks. My name's Rebecca and on today's show we're going to be building the Blockhead Motors Wild One. As you can see I've laid everything out on the table ready to go. We're going to kick off on page four number two. Now this is a really strange start to this Tamiya car. So we actually start off getting the chassis and we have to put some decals on. So I've never done that before right at the beginning. And then on the next page, it looks like we start to do the fog lights. Right, let's crack on and get started. The kit doesn't come with bearings, but it only requires 1150s or 850s. So even if you're building a shelf queen, you might as well put them in. The side panels need to be cut out precisely as you don't want the decal to hang below the chassis or water will get behind the decal over time. You can add LEDs to your wild one, but it's best to add it while you're building it. Once you fit the black bands to the lamps, you can't open them easily. Fitting the same metal bumper as Jim Watanabe has on his own car. The shocks are lovely quality. Make sure you use the silicon BA22 clear seal, not the black ones. When fitting G10 in step 14, make sure you use MA1 3x18mm with the correct spacers MA12 and MA13. The other side uses MA4 3x12mm screw. You would think these would be the same, but these are different as one has the antennae attached later on in the build. When building the gearbox, tape up MB17 because if it falls out while built, the MB5 5mm washer and MB9 850 bearing can fall inside the gearbox. I use the yellow kit oil in the front and rear. I'll try the red in the front to see if it softens it up a bit more. to page 13 step 28 and there we have it already looking like a car so this has been quite a simple build it's got that classic vintage Tamiya feel which is lovely a few things to tell you about from along the way so the fog lamps that we've got at the front here I think in hindsight I would have got Gav to smoke them so the plastic you can see through and I think it would have looked better on the front of those. Also, just so that you're not scratching away at the film, it's actually on the inside of this part, not the outside, as it looks like in the manual. We've got really nice uh, metal springs. So they're really lovely quality and look nice on the car. Just one part of it though, that third section down is actually plastic. So there's a pl plastic cuff there. Um, not sure why, but that, that perhaps would have looked nicer if it was all in metal. The front bumper, you'll notice, we've changed. So instead of using the plastic one that comes with the kit I've put on this metal one that we've got from Mirage RC so it's got more of the feel of June Watanabe's design. Next we're going to be going on to fit the electronics. Fitting the electronics is super easy you have loads of space. I ran the motor wires under the driver figure to make things look cleaner.
Gavin helped with the main decals like the white stripe. It's a shame the body doesn't have a painted white stripe already. I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe. It's totally free and it helps us to grow the channel and lets more RC fans find our content. Gavin painted up the driver for me while I fitted the easier decals. If you're looking for a friendly RC community, come and join 5,000 of the like-minded RC fans on the RC Kicks Facebook page. Look at that, I'm really, really pleased with it. A really good looking buggy. So fully working. It's got good range on the steering at the front and it's nice and smooth as well. So the driver, a few things to tell you about. The driver, Gav helped me paint that up. Um, as you know, didn't really like the painting. Um, the helmet, so on June Watanabe's version of the car, the driver had a red helmet. In this version, it's a silver one. I made a mistake here on the plates. You're supposed to screw the plates on first and then put the decal over the top so that you don't see the screws. I actually did it the wrong way round, so we're just going to colour in the yellow screw heads there so that you don't see them. The chassis on this car is black and it's got the blue decals on to make it all look blue. I think it would have been a really nice touch if the whole of the chassis was in blue instead of just the stickers on the side, so a bit like the Super Avante that's coming out in yellow. If they'd have done a blue chassis, it would have made this special car just that little bit more unique. This section comes with the kit and I wasn't sure what it was to start with. So Gav tells me that it's a radiator cover that can go on the back here. So you can see at the moment it's black and it's the whole section comes with the driver and this radiator section which covers the battery. So you get decals to put on here and this comes as extra. There's no mention of this in the manual, um, but what we might do just to add that little bit more detail is to cut round, there's kind of a little line on the black section. If we cut round that, it does look like it will fit directly over the top of there, just to add that more bit more detail to it. On the back here, on the rear shocks, you'll notice that I haven't put the decal. So there's supposed to be on the box here, you can see there's a decal on the rear shocks. Now I tried to put this on and the stickers wouldn't stick at all. So we cleaned it off, whether there was a bit of oil on there, I'm not sure, but they still wouldn't stick. So we've left those decals off. The decals were quite tricky on this car. Gav helped me out quite a lot with these, especially this white stripe at the front. So this was really, really tricky. You've got to try and line it up at the front here and also at the sides and then make a small cut at the bottom. It was really difficult to line it up, really difficult to get it on straight as well. The gearbox is known to be weak on this car with the housing flexing when you put quite a lot of power through it. So we're not sure whether this is still going to be the same in this model or if the plastic's been made that bit more stronger. So some people replace the diff, so you can put a Thorpe diff, dirt burner ball diff in from a wild one or a fox. Unfortunately, as far as we know, Tamiya are not going to be making any replacement parts for this car. But I don't think a lot of these are going to get driven a lot anyway. It's such a special car and a one-off that I think most of these are going to sit on shelves. And there we have it. That's the Blockhead Motors Wild One. It's been a great build, really fun, and I hope we see some more from June Watanabe. I really like his designs on these cars. Please like and subscribe, keep supporting the channel, and Gav's going to be up next doing the Super Avante build.